Hi my artsy folks, this is Alina. I hope you guys are doing well today and I'm going to focus in this video on one of my most favorite subjects ever, which is money. If money is also one of your favorite subjects, you can keep watching. If you are an artist who is looking into funding your own projects, you might find it super helpful to consult with one of the grant writing gurus who is Gigi Rosenberg and today I am providing certain tips from her book which is the artist's guide to grant writing and the link to the book is gonna be provided below by the way I have not collaborated with Gigi in any way she has no idea that this video exists Probably, Gigi, if you see this video, please comment so I at least know that you saw it. Um, but I found this book super helpful and I have been using the tips for quite a few years. Uh, I'm happy to share my own tips combined with Gigi's tips and my own experience in grant writing and how it actually works and what doesn't work. So let's go. Before you start even looking at grants, Ask yourself some very important questions. Actually get a pen and paper or open your notepad app, whichever one you use, and start writing these questions down because they are actually crucial, not just for grant writing, but also for us as artists to frame our work, to frame our projects, to understand why we are doing what we are doing. So the questions would be, why do you actually want the money? What does your project entail? How are you going to accomplish it? Now, some harder questions. Why is your art needed? Why is your project urgent? And why do you think it's important? By the way, you might want to check out some grant writing tips I have already provided quite in detail. The video is linked right here. And one of the most valuable Gigi's tips is to start your research, not with the grants, not with the databases, but with you, yourself, as an artist. We all, as artists, gotta figure out where are we in our career, where are we going next? And take our projects, take our grant proposals from there. You know, in order to win a grant, you have to, first of all, have a very clear vision of how you see your art and your project and the grand priorities and the grand values should be aligned with your own they should correspond to the direction of your career path so before even researching build your vision be very precise and jot down all the possible project ideas whether they are huge, whether they are tiny, but just keep writing things down. A very great tip from Gigi is to schedule a research day once a month. Well, it technically could be maybe a research week once, I don't know, once a season or something. You can save all the info you find with relevant deadlines and details on your computer. I personally use Evernote for this. You can use Notion or whatever other app is better for you. Check in with deadlines regularly and plan in advance. Start working on a grant about two months before. So you have enough time and I'll tell you why very soon. Keep watching. And set yourself a false deadline two weeks prior to the real deadline. Another tip, that's my personal tip, if you're working with collaborators, if you depend on other people, for example, you need their resumes, you need their information, don't tell them the real deadline ever. Give them a two, three weeks prior a fake deadline, because if these people are late and they probably will be, most of them will be late, I can guarantee, you are not gonna miss your funding opportunity because you will have a safer deadline that you tell those people. So keep that in mind. Be ready to work on grants all year long, in chunks, from time to time. It is a rhythm. You cannot 
possibly apply to all the grants out there for a year in advance and then just go on vacation for a year. I mean, on vacation from grant writing, of course. It is something that you go back to uh, from time to time, which is normal. It's, it's part of what we do. It's our job and we have to revisit our databases and work on new applications all the time in a certain rhythm. It's important to remember that most grants only offer a certain percentage of the coverage of your budget. So be sure that there is another source of funding listed in your budget. By the way, the video I made about budget, uh, structuring budgets for grant applications is also listed here. So whether it's ticket sales or it's another um, support that you are receiving or maybe it's a private donation from someone or you are actually donating the money yourself to your own project, which can also be, this is called self-funding and a lot of artists actually start like this. Uh, you have to list that amount in your budget. Uh, for example, if the grant awards you only with 90% tops, then you have to be ready to come up with the remaining 10% that you have to show that, that you're going to acquire from somewhere. It's a great process to actually write grant applications. You know why? I didn't think about it before I actually started. And then sometime later, I realized that uh, a grant application actually helps you, me, an artist, helps an artist frame your own project and understand its goals, understand its worth and where it's going. So it's a very, very cool process to actually nail your project description, not just to get the funding, but also for yourself and your team to understand why you are doing this type of the art at the moment in this location. Some organizations provide an opportunity to schedule draft reviews with them. So it works in a way that you don't submit the final application, but you do submit some kind of a draft either by email or by submittable, or there can be another way. And uh, you fill out their calendar, you get a time slot and you can actually call them or they can call you. So they review your materials, they read your text, and then they help you adjust it, improve it in order to have a better chance to actually get the money. Don't miss that opportunity. It's usually free. I think it's always free. Well, I have never seen any organization that would do paid draft reviews. That sounds weird to me because technically it's their job to help you get the money that they provide. So uh, don't miss this. Check out for those. I know that it's especially relevant if you are applying for aid in the United States. Another very important tip. Actually, it's not really a tip. It's just, um, it's just a warning. Be ready, really prepared mentally to get rejections. And be prepared that in the beginning, all of your applications might be rejected. That was my story. I'm not making this up. The first year I applied for funding with my first interdisciplinary project. I think I spent four months or some, or two months researching and then two more months drafting my application, finally submitting. And I was, I was sure that my project will go places because I will receive all this funding and stuff. Well, guess what? I got nothing. I got zero. And that was, at first super hard for me because I couldn't understand why, but well, then I scheduled uh, reviews, feedback calls, which is super important. After you don't get the money, after you get a rejection, a lot of foundations once again would provide an opportunity for a feedback call. Please use it because actually feedback calls were probably one of the most important aspects that helped me personally, although I have watched a ton of webinars and uh, I've been on Zoom calls with uh, various grant writers and yeah, so I've done a lot of those things. I have read a bunch of articles, but what has helped me the most is actually when somebody reviewed my personal text that I wrote, not just getting general tips. So do apply, do fail if you must, 
and do get a feedback call, please. It's going to teach you much more than, for example, I can teach you right now. Don't despair. Go back to your applications, review, write down what can be better and try again next year or next season, whenever the deadline is. Sometimes the deadlines are two, three times a year, four times a year. It depends on where you're applying. So go back and follow those tips, apply with a different project maybe and fix the mistakes and hopefully you're gonna get it. Maybe not from the second time, but maybe from the third or fourth. It's definitely worth being persistent. Grant writing is not something that you can nail from the first try and get all the funding. Just let's be real here, okay? Proofread your texts out loud. I know it can sound ridiculous, but kick everyone out if you live with a bunch of people or go somewhere to a quiet place where nobody can hear you if you are shy and read them out loud. I always do. You don't have to believe me, but I sit in front of my computer and I read all the texts I have written really expressively because when we read things out loud, the mistakes that our eyes don't catch, we hear them if we really pronounce the words or if something doesn't make sense. We also can hear that the brain processes the audio information in a different way. Now, a brief note from both Gigi and I is that your work samples have to be a strong representation of your project, of your work, and they have to be relevant. They have to reflect what you're applying for. I can tell you one of my stories. I once applied for a project to be performed on stage. At the same time, my team and I were working on a cinematic version of the project and I have presented some work samples from the cinematic version. And the cinematic version was different because we have filmed everything separately and then we blended everything, we cut, but you know, when it's on stage, when it's the stage version, everything happens simultaneously. So the committee didn't award the grant to me and when I had a feedback call with them, they said that my application was very strong and all, and I was very close to getting the money, but I didn't get it because my work sample did not represent the version I was applying for. It was still the same project. It was the same material being presented, but it was not the format. So don't be like me please present your real format. If you are applying for film, present them the film. If you are applying for a theater play, present them the theater play. Don't present, I don't know, um, a picture from a gallery exhibition when you have a bunch of paintings. If you are applying for painting, not for an exhibition. You know what I mean? It has to be coherent with what you are going to do. It cannot be something else or some other version of the project, even if that is your project. Your application is probably going to have a lot of different sections. I'm going to only briefly mention them. I'm not going to really concentrate on them. Um, again, check out that video on grant writing that I have done already because there are a lot of things that I'm covering. Um, make sure that in the overview, in the first short description of the project, you are really describing what the project is. Don't write anything too philosophical, anything irrelevant, because to be honest, it might be beautiful, but that's not what they are looking for. And that's not what they're going to award you the money with. They need to really uh, see that you are doing, I don't know, composing a work for uh, some contemporary choir that is also gonna do ballet, whatever. I just made this up. But it shouldn't be something too romanticized, something with a metaphysical intake. Leave all that out, please. Be pragmatic, be boring in the sense that it has to be clear to the people who are looking at your application for the first time. They have no idea who you are and they're trying to figure out what it is you are doing. They don't need philosophical interest. Of course, there is, for example, artist statement, resume, how you are going to evaluate success, how you're going to reach your target audience, the timeline, the supplementary materials and all that. I'm not going to concentrate on it today. 
However, if you would like me to cover more of this um, in the next videos, please comment below because I need your feedback if you need this info. Now let's move to the writing writing part. So first of all, even if you are a professional writer, please remember that it's nearly impossible, or probably it is impossible, I don't know, to accomplish, to write a really nailed grant application in one sitting. So please make sure to schedule a few sessions, several days apart, preferably, or several weeks apart, even better, uh, in order to actually write a substantial, profound text that is going to reflect your project and that is going to align with the values of the organization you're applying to. So it's the best if you actually do have a break of several days or weeks because that writer needs to breathe and your brain needs to have a time out so you can come back to it, look at it fresh and really see what can be improved really quickly. Start with just a lousy draft. Please don't aim for some perfect piece of writing right away because, again, this is not your goal. Your goal is to get your ideas clear for yourself first and really align everything so it makes sense for you. Most likely some significant info is going to be missing from your first draft, which is fine, absolutely. So you are going to either reflect on it, if it depends on you, or do a research, if it's some info that you are supposed to find, maybe some info about your future collaborators and stuff like that, and you are going to add that during your second draft sitting. Keep in mind the word count. There are tons of websites for you to count your words or characters or whatever it is the application tells you to limit yourself with. So just look up some online word counter, whatever, and use that or use uh, your word or pages file, whatever you use to write texts on your computer. But please don't go over the limit because even if it doesn't tell you, usually it tells you in red that you're over the limit. But if it doesn't and you are over the limit, it's not going to fit in most likely your text is going to be cut probably in the middle of a sentence it might even be in the middle of a word you don't want that to happen even if your application gets submitted with the text that is over the limit you want to make sure that it's going to be all there send your text to someone to read before you actually submit it especially if this is your first round of grant applications if you have never ever done that before, that would be super helpful. Send it to someone to read who is a native speaker, who can think logically, and be ready for some healthy criticism. Don't argue uh, with your friend or colleague or whoever it is, but be ready to actually intake it. Again, that's why you need a false deadline, because you need the time to process all these things if you want a really strong uh, piece of writing. Now let's talk style. In your writing itself, be solid. For example, uh, don't write something like I will try. Instead, write things like my goal is, I intend to do whatever it is you're going to do for your project. But be very steady. Let them see that you are ready to proceed with your project. Don't overuse adjectives, don't use three, that you are working with a wonderful, um, mesmerizing, experienced collaborator named so-and-so. No, just maybe use one adjective and it shouldn't be too poetic. So maybe it's things like wonderful or even accomplished wouldn't work. Be very precise with the nouns. Use future tense, don't use conditional. Don't say I would like, I would do, I would perform, I would exhibit, blah, blah, blah. Instead say I will, right? Because it sets a completely different tone. It shows that you're sure about what you're doing. If you're not sure about what you're doing, don't apply for grants, you're not ready yet. Proofread for errors really carefully, even if you use spell check. I mean, all of us do, but 
the spell check might not be able to identify certain errors such as there, there, things like that, that look right but they are wrong in the context. Verify the proper names, the spelling of the names of your collaborators, uh, the venues, whatever other organizations, the abbreviations, don't use too many abbreviations, please. I know it's very, very difficult with the word count, with the character count, but we have to restrain from using abbreviations as much as we can. Don't write in caps unless it is the title of the whatever you are describing, writing about, but otherwise, please don't. Please avoid um, italics, bold, all these things, because the committee doesn't need to see anything highlighted like this. So please write everything as plain text. Now, remember that you gotta stand out from the crowd. Tell your story. Tell about what you have done and where are you now. It's important for them to see you as a person, to see your team personally. What are you or you and your team are envisioning next? What is it for you in the project that you are doing that's going to bring you to the next level to make you a better artist and to make the audience around you better people pretty much otherwise why are you doing it and remember to embrace the attitude that your project is going to happen no matter what of course you're not gonna say that if you don't give me the funding i will still go ahead but you have to have it between the lines they have to see that you are sure they have to see that it's an honor for them to help you because your project is so great that if they support you they are going to join you in the great cause of creating your art remember to set goals that are realistic and achievable and they should correspond to where you are at your career right now for example if you're just starting out but you would like to have a stadium with 10,000 people and it's your first ever project as an independent artist well might happen for you but realistically there is not a big chance that it should happen right so in order to not get depressed if it doesn't work out from the first try start on a smaller scale and then build up so an announcement for me is that I consult on grant writing and structuring budgets, writing artist statements, writing biographies and CVs and things like that. If you are interested in a consultation with me, use the link below to sign up and I will look at your materials. I will arrange a Zoom call with you to actually go through your writing. Check out the playlist on artistic organization that I'm providing below. And sign up for my newsletter for artists in order to stay updated about the resources that I send regularly, new ideas and thoughts. And also you are going to now receive an updated guide on grant writing and organizing creative projects that I have recently upgraded. I hope this video was helpful. If you're thinking to start a grant writing phase of your career or maybe you have already received grants, maybe you have done some successful writing, I can only congratulate you. In any case, let me know how it's going in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!